It's time for a bookshelf tour. I have been long awaiting filming another bookshelf tour. The last time that I filmed one was two years ago. And honestly, my book collection has grown an insane amount since then. I have these three Billy bookshelves from Ikea behind me. I have a Target bookshelf across the room. And in my bedroom, I have a TBR cart. So lots of books for us to cover today. So settle down, buckle up, and get ready for the journey. And I will preface this by saying that I'm about to move. So I have to haul all of these books across the greater Boston area um, to my new apartment in which I will have a separate room just for my books. So Katie's book nook will get its own nook in the apartment. I'm so excited and so I will be taking you on that journey of setting up my new book room slash office and like probably do a bookshelf tour there when I get to my new place but I really just wanted to capture what my books are like before I move out of this apartment. And so, cue the bookshelf tour. And starting off in the top left, this is my romance shelf. It's so colorful and this is really where I keep all of my romance novels. So first up here, we have this cute little Pokemon Funko. And then over there, we have a BT21 Funko. And I like to keep them on the shelf because they're just so colorful and cute. So now I'm going to go through all of the books that I have on this shelf. Neon Gods by Katie Robert. Electric Idol by Katie Robert, Wicked Beauty by Katie Robert. I absolutely love the Dark Olympus series and I'm so excited for everything else that is going to be coming out in that series. The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai, A Brush with Love by Maisie Eddings, You Had Me at Ola and A Lot Like Adios by Alexis Daria, Circling Back to You by Julie Tiu. The Kish Quotient, The Bride Test, and The Heart Principle by Helen Hong. The Spanish Love Deception and The American Roommate Experiment by Elena Armas. Set on You by Amy Leah. I love this book so much, I read it twice this year. The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. It Happened One Summer and Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, which is just an absolute classic at this point. The Cheat Sheet by Sarah Adams. Fix Her Up, Love Her or Lose Her, and Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey. This is her Hot and Hammered series. So far I've read the first book, but I definitely want to reread the first book and then read the rest of the series because I love Tessa Bailey. The Love Hypothesis and Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. I absolutely adore her work. It's STEM rom-coms and I'm a woman in STEM myself, so I just adore them with every fiber of my being. Red, White, and Royal Blue and One Last Stop by Casey McQuinston. Your Wrong Number by Lynn Painter. Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren. Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. Window Shopping and My Keller Vacation by Tessa Bailey. These are two of her independently published books and this one was definitely one of my faves of the year. For the Life, Chloe Brown, Take a Hint, Danny Brown, and After Age, Eve Brown, all by Talia Hibbert. I absolutely love, love, love this trilogy. It's so amazing and everyone should read it. And then lastly, we have all of the Ice Planet Barbarian special editions that are out so far, which includes Ice Planet Barbarian, Barbarian Alien, Barbarian Lover, and Barbarian Mind by Ruby Dixon. These books absolutely blew up on Book Talk and for a good reason. They're honestly just so fun and I love them and I love these special edition covers so, so much. Okay, now moving on to my Shadow Hunters shelf. This shelf is so full of stuff that it flows over onto the shelf next to it. But yes, love Shadow Hunters. So many books in the series. Love them all, basically. To start, we have some accessories. We have a bobblehead Baby Yoda. And then this cute little Will and Gem candle that I got like forever ago. Here are the 10th anniversary editions of City of Bones and Clockwork Angel. I think that they are so pretty and I absolutely love this style. 
Here are all six books in the Mortal Instruments series and together they create this great panorama. This is the first half of the Mortal Instruments. It's basically two trilogies and this is City of Bones, City of Ashes, and City of Glass. Honestly, I think the Mortal Instruments is the worst series in the Shadowhunters world and they just get much better after that, but these definitely give you the foundation for the rest of the world. This is the second half of the Mortal Instruments, the second trilogy, and that is City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and City of Heavenly Fire. So at the top here, I have the Shadowhunters Codex by Cassandra Clare and Joshua Lewis, who is her husband, and it's just some fun little fun facts about the Shadowhunters, and is technically a book that they have in their world, and I always love those little companion books. Next is the Dark Artifices Trilogy, Lady of Midnight, Lord of Shadows, and Queen of Air and Darkness. This follows Emma Carstairs and Julian Blackthorne in modern day LA. Here is Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron. These are the Last Hours Trilogy. This is her latest trilogy, so the third one comes out in January, and I'm so excited. And this is like the second gen spinoff of the Mortal Instruments, which I haven't gotten to yet on my shelf. So something that's really cool to me and really special is I have arcs of both the Chain of Gold and the Chain of Iron. I kind of came across them like not in the way that I was sent them. Um, I got this one at ALA and like they only had a few copies and I waited in a line to get them. And then with Chain of Iron, my beautiful friend Chanel sent it to me because she got sent an influencer copy and she knew how much I love Shadowhunters and sent it along to me. Here I have this little clockwork angel necklace that Tessa Gray wears in the Mortal Instruments and I usually keep it on top of those books. Here we have the Mortal Instruments, which is a Shadowhunter series that takes place in the 1800s in London. The books are Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Princess. And these are my absolute favorite Cassandra Clare books. They're just so beautiful and heartbreaking and I just absolutely love them so much. Tessa Gray is definitely one of the book characters that I relate to the most out of literally all of the books that I've ever read. And last but not least for this shelf, we have The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. This is the first book in the Eldest Curses series, and it follows Magnus and Alec, and I love them so much. This okay, here's my spillover Shadowhunter shelf, and then some other series that I love. So let's start with the Shadowhunters part. And just the one little decoration I have on this shelf is my Ariel Funko Pop. Starting over here are just some, like, samplers that I've gotten at like book cons and stuff. So we have a Chain of Gold little sampler, Queen of Air and Darkness little sampler, Red Scrolls of Magic little sampler, and a this was a pre-order benefit and it's like an illustrated Shadowhunters as fairy tales kind of book and I just think it's cute and those are just cute little things to keep on my Shadowhunter shelf. Now we have some of the like little standalone story collections in the Shadowhunter world. This is Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, and Robin Wasserman. This is The Bane Chronicles by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, and Maureen Johnson. This is Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare, Sarah Reese Brennan, Maureen Johnson, Kelly Link, and Robin Wasserman. And one of the stories in this book did make me cry. Also, Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy also definitely made me cry, if you know, you know. Then we have here an illustrated history of notable Shadowhunters and Denzians of the Downworld by Cassandra Clare, illustrated by Cassandra Jean. And this is kind of one of my favorite things because you can flip through and you can see art of all of the different characters. Now on to probably my favorite part of the collection is my Waterstones exclusive edition. So here we have Chain of Gold and Chain of Iron as part of the last hours and I ordered the third one so I'm so excited to get it. I've been thinking of getting like plastic covers to help like preserve them in good condition since they are just like a cloth cover. Um, if anyone knows anything about that, please comment down below because I would love to learn more. Here we have Lady of Midnight, Lord of Shadows, and Queen of Air and Darkness. This one I got when it came out, and this one was not too hard to find uh, resale, but this one. This book was insane. The resale prices are like $700, $800, and I made a TikTok just about like the insane resale prices that exist for books, and someone was like, hey, I have this book, and I saw that you like really wanted it from your TikTok. Um, so she offered it to me at like a really, really reasonable price and I'm forever thankful to that person for offering it to me. Um, I kept the bow on it because I just thought it was so cute and this is like 
literally like the shining jewel of my collection. And then the last Waterstones book I have here is The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. I do need the second one in this trilogy. I forget the name of it. It's escaping me. Um, but the resale prices like aren't too insane, so I'm probably going to try and pick that up when I have extra money to spend, which... I don't know when that will be. <laughs> and here is my box of the Shadowhunters Codex. It came in my Illumicrate special editions for the Mortal Instruments, which I actually ended up selling, but I did keep this tin because I absolutely love it for my bookmarks and it fits right in on my Shadowhunters shelf. Like, look at that. Blends right in. Here is one of my favorite trilogies. It's YA, but it kind of borders on New Adult. And honestly, seeing all three of them together like that with the snake on the front is really cool. I feel like this book came out at like the apex of the YA snake trend. Um, and this is Serpent and Dove, Blood and Honey, and Gods and Monsters. This is one of my favorite series literally of all time, and I feel like not enough people talk about it. And it is the Furyborn series by Claire Legrand, or otherwise the Imperium trilogy, Furyborn, Kingsbane, and Lightbringer. I mean, just like look at how beautiful they look together all out like this and like oh my god please please if you've ever had an inkling of being interested in it please read it okay so here i have the schwab shelf she's one of my favorite authors and so i have a shelf dedicated just to her works starting off we have the near witch which was her first book and it got republished and i bought that dark vault which is a bind up of her archive series and i do think that this series is unfinished which is quite sad but i have it so i looked through all of my shelves and i think this is the book that i happen to own the most copies of which is the invisible life of addie larue and yeah i own five copies because i wanted to get all the different special editions that were being sold in stores so this is the original this is the U.S. Special Edition, this is the Barnes & Noble Special Edition, this is the U.K. Standard hardcover that was sold um, when it first came out, and then this is the Special Edition U.K., and it has these really pretty flower edges that I like to display out on my bookshelf. Here we have City of Ghosts, Tuttle of Bones, and Bridge of Souls. This is V.E. Schwab's middle grade series. I've listened to them on audiobook, and Keely got me the hardcover books and i just need to listen to the third one now but i absolutely adore this series it is amazing and so spooky but also really heartwarming because here are my copies of a darker shade of magic a gathering of shadows and a conjuring of light i absolutely love the series this is the first book i read by v.e schwab honestly when i first discovered booktube in like 2018 absolutely ate it up i um only have the paperbacks of this one in the regular edition because i bought the hardcovers in special edition which you'll see soon and since i went to a signing and met v.e schwab all of them are signed which is amazing i do want to go back and do a reread um, eventually one day an annotate because this is before I even knew what annotating was when I read these uh, but I think I'm gonna save it until like the sequel series comes out. Vicious and Vengeful, the Extraordinary series I think it's called. Absolutely adore this duology. I do eventually want to go back and get Vicious and Hardcover. However, I won this book like in a giveaway from Tor randomly and so I never wanted to give it away because it was a free book, you know? And it does have all of my annotations. This Savage Song, an art dark duet. Honestly, this duology is so underrated. I love it so much. There are some special editions from the UK that I do want to pick up eventually. But as you can see, my V.E. Schwab shelf is quickly running out of space. These are the two V.E. Schwab arcs that I own. Um, City of Ghosts and Gallant. And... These are my treasured possessions because obviously I'm a big fan of her and I'm so excited that I got an ARC. This one I got at BookCon and this one Maddie gave me. I'm not cool enough to get sent copies from the publisher. So here we have the exclusive collector's editions of the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. Love them so much with the black cover and then the colored spines. There were also the Barnes & Noble exclusive editions but at the time I didn't buy them because I was like, oh, I only have one exclusive edition. But if it were now, I probably would have both sets because that's just how I've evolved as a book collector. This book is very special to me because my best friend Melissa got me it for my birthday and this was like when we were adults and finally at the age where we had money to exchange birthday gifts. So it was very special and when you open it up, there is art inside. Love that. 
I just love this series so much. A little Charmander that's randomly on the shelf. And then I have two copies of Gowland. I tend now a days to more so only really go for special editions that are like sold through retailers instead of like book boxes, unless it's something that I really, really like, um, just because they're easier to get and tend to be cheaper. But this is Gowland, the US hardback. Very interesting because it's like a unique size. I've never really seen a book in these dimensions and I think it's done on purpose to like mimic a journal which is like important in the book. Um, and then also we have the UK edition, that special edition with these beautiful sprayed edges that I needed for my collection. All right, so now we are getting to a shelf and I just called this like my fave auto buy authors shelf and you probably see this one in the background of a lot of my videos. To start off, we have Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen. Love this duology. This was her first published work and these are getting new covers that have like these really cool sprayed edges um, because there's going to be another book in the series coming out like a companion book and I absolutely cannot wait. Warrior of the Wild by Trisha Levenzeller. I honestly think that this book of hers is so underrated in her collection. I loved it. If you want enemies to lovers, you need to read The Shadow Between Us because it, it just gives all of that. I have this little pre-order sword necklace that I put around these books. Blade of Secrets and Master of Iron by Trisha Levenseller. Moving on to my Margaret Rogerson collection. Enchantment of Ravens, her first book. Vespertine, her newest book. And I also have an arc that I keep tucked behind my copy of Sorcery of Thorns. And this is obviously a prized thing in my collection because I like to have at least like one arc of my favorite authors. And of course, Sorcery of Thorns, which is like my favorite book ever. It's kept facing out on my bookshelf at all times. So you've definitely seen it there in my videos. I have this little Psyduck Funko Pop I like to keep on this shelf because it's very visible in my videos. And I just feel like Psyduck is the Pokemon that I relate to the most. And he doesn't really, he kind of stands up, but not really. So just kind of let him do his thing. Moving on to Miss Carrie Maniscalco. Kingdom of the Wicked, Kingdom of the Curse, and Kingdom of the Feared. The third book just came out this year and it was everything to me. One of my favorite YA slash new adult fantasy romances for sure. Stalking Jack the Ripper, Hunting Prince Dracula, Escaping from Houdini, and Capturing the Devil. This quartet is absolutely amazing and I love it so, so much. And then finally, the Barnes & Noble exclusive editions of the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy I absolutely love with the white background instead of the black. I really like the way I set up this shelf. It's all YA books that are like the same height and it's so satisfying. Here we have our little chamomile tea dragon plushie that I got at ALA and I am obsessed with him. We also have this coin that goes with the fable duology that I got in some sort of book box. Bone Crier's Moon and Bone Crier's Dawn by Catherine Purdy. Read the first one, loved it, need to continue on. The Princess Will Save You and The Queen Will Betray You by Sarah Henning. Need to pick up the third book in this series. Lake's Edge and Forest Fall by Lyndall Clipstone, Jade Fire Gold by June C.L. Tan, Ash Princess, Lady Smoke, and Ever Queen by Laura Sebastian, Light Lark by Alex Astor, Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen, both the regular edition and the BNN edition with the color change. This Vicious Grace by Emily Fiede, read this one earlier this year and loved it. Twin Crowns by Catherine Doyle and Catherine Weber. Wicked Fox by Kat Cho. If you like K-dramas, please read this book. I have the second book on my TBR card because I still need to read it. Story of my life. Fable and Namesake, probably the most satisfying duology to see the covers side by side. Wild is the Witch and the Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. These are actually two completely different standalones, but since they're by the same author and kind of in the same theme, pull them out together. And lastly, Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. This is a shelf that I just recently redid and I kind of want to call this like my new to me, new favorite author shelf. Has like three or four new authors that I am obsessed with. These are the three Funkos that I have chilling on the shelf. There's really no rhyme or reason as to what Funkos kind of go where. They're just wherever. And then we have this nice Alcrate Apothecary TBR jar that has nothing in it. 
Starting off, we have Carval Legendary and Finale. Please go check out my Carval reading vlog if you have it not yet. Once Upon a Broken Heart and The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber, and these are the Barnes & Noble exclusive editions. These are the same books, but with the special pre-order dust jacket on them. So this is the front, this is the back, and underneath I just have the regular dust jackets. And then here is a really pretty collector's edition of Carval that was recently released. And this is what it looks like underneath the slipcase. Here we have Six Crimson Cranes and The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim. Six Crimson Cranes was one of my favorite books last year and I just think the cover is so stunning. We also have Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim and I do need to pick up the second book in this series. All the Stars and Teeth and All the Tides of Fate by Adeline Grace. My three copies of Belladonna, which is probably going to end up being one of my top books of the year. We have the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition on the left, then the normal edition, and then the UK edition. Even though the two covers look similar underneath the dust jacket, they are different colors. Which is why I decided to buy the two different editions. Here we have the UK editions of Six Crimson Cranes and The Dragon's Promise. These books are literally so pretty. I had to buy them for my collection. I love this art style so, so much. Now here is my Rebecca Ross books. Starting with Dreams Lie Beneath. This is definitely making my list of one of my favorite books of the year. I love Rebecca Ross's writing so, so much. Here we have The Queen's Rising and The Queen's Resistance. Honestly, underrated faves. And finally, we have A River Enchanted, which is her adult debut, and I'm so excited. I know that this book is just going to be absolutely amazing. And now it's my Sarah J Maas shelf, and pretty much this is another shelf that is at the point where it's overflowing and is going to need to spill out into another shelf soon once Sarah J Maas releases more books. So that's a thing that I'm going to need to figure out. Here we have this little guy because... I feel like the fire aspect kind of goes along with the fire heart. I have to do this one in two parts because all the thorn glass books don't fit on the shelf together, but we have Assassin's Blade, the prequel novellas, Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, and Queen of Shadows. I think my favorites in the series are definitely between Air of Fire and Queen of Shadows. And then we have Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, and Kingdom of Ash. Honestly, love these books so much. I'm definitely due for a reread because I read like all of the books in two weeks besides the last one because I read them just before the last one came out and I also have a reading blog for the last one so please check that video out. It's like one of my I guess long-standing videos that still gets views to this day and it was just an amazing experience to kind of like binge read this series and I definitely am craving being back in the world. All right sorry for the abrupt change in nails but I stopped filming and started filming on another day so that's why I have brand new nails. These are my collector's editions of Throne of Glass and A Court of Thorns and Roses. I think that they are so beautiful underneath the slipcase. Here is my collection of A Court of Thorns and Roses books. The first one, A Court of Mist and Fury. My favorite a story with this one is that my dog ate my dust jacket that I had originally, and this was right after these covers had gone out of print, but thankfully Maddie from Princess of Paperback had an extra set that she had bought to put on like unique dust jackets, and so she had an extra one that she gave to me, and she saved my life because these were going for really expensive. We have A Court of Wings and Ruin, and then A Court of Frost and Starlight. I have two editions of A Court of Silver Flames, the regular hardcover and the tour hardcover. And in putting these away, I actually kind of like the tour hardcover on the bottom here because this dust jacket was getting like a little bit crumpled from being in close proximity. I have the special edition hardcover from Waterstones of House of Earth and Blood, which is the first Crescent City book, and it has these red sprayed edges. Here we have my standard editions of House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath. And here are the UK tour editions of Crescent City House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath. And that is my Sarah J Moss shelf. This shelf is another favorite of mine and has some of my favorite series. First up we have this crown that I got on the internet for book talk because everyone was wearing crowns and I just think it's so cute and very me with all the butterflies. And then I also have this Tamagotchi I just keep on the shelf. I used to collect Tamagotchis. And so he's just chilling on the shelf. The first series that I have here is Blood and Ash. From Blood and Ash, Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, The Crown of Gilded Bones, and The War of Two Queens by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I had done a reading blog for reading the first two books, I think. 
and I have like a whole reading JLA vlog series and I will be continuing in the future for the last few books that I haven't read so keep an eye out for that. Here is A Shadow in the Ember and A Light in the Flame which is the Flesh and Fire series and this is a prequel series to the From Blood and Ash series that I haven't read yet and I'm so excited to read because I want to know about Nikitos and Sarah's story and yeah just keep an eye out for a reading vlog. And here we have the Barnes & Noble exclusive of A Light in the Flame. I don't know why they put two stickers on there. I need to peel them off at some point. Here is my Pride and Joy, the From Blood and Ash series, the Bookish Box edition. I know that the Bookish Box as a company does have some issues, but I really wanted to get this set in particular over the other special edition sets that are out there because I'm a really big fan of this artist, Monolime Art. They're just one of my favorite artists in the bookish sphere, and so I knew that I needed these special editions. In particular also got these bookmarks that I keep with these books then in this little space right here I've been keeping my book embosser just because it's a random space in the bookshelf that it fits okay moving on to my stranger dreamer collection here are my US editions of stranger dreamer and muse of nightmares literally one of my all-time favorite duologies just the most beautiful writing you will ever read then these are like my babies these are these special editions from the UK of Stranger Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares. As you can see, they both have the sprayed edges. This one, it was so hard to find the sprayed edge copy, and I had just wanted to find one with just this cover, right? Like, I didn't even need the sprayed edges, and I ordered a book that was a former library book, not thinking anything would come of it, and it came with the sprayed edges, and I cried. I also have this print of Laszlo and Sarai that I got in a bookish box. I think maybe Owl Crate or something. Here is my next shelf, and it's just kind of an assortment of random books. This shelf is where I keep my signed album cover from my favorite member of Seventeen, which is a K-pop boy group. And I really like that I got this particular album signed because it was like a weird put it together yourself thing. But anyways, that means that I was able to like frame it nice and flat. I have this little RJ keychain, some more Funkos, this cute mug from Anthropology that has just has a bunch of character cards that I got from Lit Joy Crate like forever ago. With Gem. Will, Dorian, Tessa, Rowan, Aelin. Here I have some VIP badges. Sorry, it's like really hard to show these off. Ugh. Here I just keep my VIP badges from some of the K-pop concerts I went to this year, but I'm gonna try and get like a shadow box and like actually frame these. I also have my medal for my powerlifting meet and my BookCon 2019 badge I have on this nice lanyard with all these pins and again I probably want to put these in a shadow box as well Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Rosanna Brown The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon this book is a behemoth and the prequel that is coming out soon is also a behemoth this is the Illuminae Files series by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman Illuminae, Gemina, and Obsidio Probably my favorite multimedia book that I've ever read and one of my favorite YA uh, sci-fis. I also think that this plastic cover is such a cool design choice and I haven't seen anything like it since. Skyward, Starsight, and Cytotonic by Brandon Sanderson. These are his young adult sci-fi books and I absolutely love them so much. I think they're so cool and unique. Um, if you like science, like it involves like a lot of physics and math and stuff like that, it's pretty cool. Um, I don't read like a ton of sci-fi books, but I was really really impressed with these ones I do need to get to the third one still haven't read it yet, but overall really love this series I actually can't believe that this is the only Brandon Sanderson that I've read so far in my life because he's such a big like fantasy Person in the fantasy sphere, but alas Children of Blood and Bone and Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Amietti read the first one loved it Gotta read the second one. I'm waiting on news for the third one This is a special edition of the Song of Achilles by Marilyn Miller. I haven't read it yet But this edition was so pretty I had to have it so hopefully you like it. Criers War and Iron Heart by Nina Varela Very underrated sapphic by a sci-fi series. A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik I've always heard really great things about her books. I haven't picked any of them up yet. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid I mean an absolute stunning classic. The City of Brass and Kingdom of Copper by S.A. Chakraborty. Definitely books that I want to be reading. Don't have the third one yet, but I will get to this series eventually. Red Rising by Pierce Brown. Again, I feel like this is another pretty well-known sci-fi series that I haven't started yet, but I do have this first one. Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. This is the third in the Diviner series. I read the entire series, The Quartet. Loved it. 
Um, only have this third one because I went to a book signing where Libra Bray was and I got it signed. Um, but I don't like that you can't get all of the series in matching hardcovers, so that is why I don't own all of them. Here is my like Dark Academia slash Lee Bardugo shelf. I have this little Funko Pop here, and then a toothless Funko Pop here. I have this magnet that's the B key sword from A Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, but I leave it on the shelf over here because I just think it looks better on the shelf than on my fridge. And on it, it says, no story ever truly ends as long as it is told. Obviously, I love the Starless Sea so much because it's literally where my tattoo is from. First up, we have Babel by RF Kuang. Do want to read this one soon. Dark Academia just at its finest. The Atlas 6 by Olive Blake. Read this one when it was self-published and I'm very excited to get to the second one. It is on another shelf at this point because I just put all my overflow books on a different shelf because I'm moving, so I will need to be rearranging everything. Two copies of The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, the original US hardback and then the UK first edition hardback with these really cool designs and of course I leave this stenciled edge out. I got the second hand and obviously it's like a little destroyed. But, like, the book jacket itself is, like, supposed to look old and worn, so I don't really mind that. Also, I just think it's very pretty underneath the dust jacket. Here we have The Demon in the Woods, which is a Shadow and Bone graphic novel about the Darkling. I got this cool lenticular uh, postcard for pre-ordering. Sitting behind this book, I have my self-published copy of The Atlas Six by Levi Blake that I have tapped. And then I have the box, so this is the really cool collector's edition of Shadow and Bone, and I liked the hardcover more, so I leave that facing out and then I leave the box behind it. King of Scars and Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. I do need to go back and read Rule of Wolves. Haven't read it yet. I'm afraid of the pain. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, Her Dark Academia, set at Yale. Absolutely loved it. We'll probably need to do a reread before Hellbent comes out, but I'm so excited. Okay, now onto my Grishaverse pile. These are the new cover paperbacks that were released, and this is how I read it. I don't have the original hardcovers because I got into the series like once those were already out of print. And then this is the UK collector's edition of Shadow and Bone that was released a few years ago. It's very pretty with the blue on blue and the blue sprayed edges. These are the UK collector's editions of Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I absolutely love when collector's editions are like these hardcovers with embossing and foil on them. I think they're so pretty. And then, of course, they have sprayed edges. Here are my original copies of Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. I was lucky enough to buy them at a time where you could get the sprayed edges, which is really exciting because I don't think that they sell those anymore. And then lastly, I have The Language of Thorns, which is a companion book to the Grishaverse, and it's just like full of fairy tales. The one thing I don't have from the Grishaverse that I need, now that I'm thinking about it, is the, um, the Book of Saints that's in the show slash book. That I don't have that yet, but I will get that eventually because... I feel like I need it for my collection. This shelf was supposed to be a black and white shelf, but it is not really sticking to that aesthetic anymore. Here's my little Stitch Funko. Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. The Poppy War, The Dragon Republic, and The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. I want to read these so, so badly. I mean, everyone has said that they are magnificent and terrible, and I love R.F. Kuang as a person, so I do need to actually like read her stuff. My little Holly Black stack. Here are the Barnes & Noble exclusives in the black cover of the Cruel Prince series, which is the prequel, uh, How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories, The Cruel Prince, The Wicked King, and The Queen of Nothing. And then again, here is the series in their white standard covers, How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories, Cruel Prince, Wicked King, Queen of Nothing. I have two editions of Book of Night, but I realize I'm going to need to get a third one um, to actually read the series because I don't tend to like read or annotate my special editions, but this is the BNN exclusive with the inverted colors, and then this is the Waterstones exclusive edition on the right, and what I really liked about this one was the sprayed edge, and I have that edge facing out on my bookshelf. Here I have Courting Darkness by Robin Lefevers, which is a follow-up series um, to her first series that I am forgetting the name of at the moment, and there's also a white book that goes with this, but this was just put on the shelf because it's black, and it's my black and white shelf. But I do want to eventually get to all of her books. Here we have the Queens of Fenburn series by Kendar Blake, which is the prequel novella bind-up. 
three dark crowns, one dark throne, two dark reigns, and five dark fates. I've read all of them except for the last book. This is my favorite graphic novel series, Monstrous by Majori Lu and Sana Takata. Um, we have volumes one through six here. I think I've read volumes one to three. I definitely need to continue on because it is such an interesting story and drawn in this very beautiful art deco style and I love the series so much. Here I have two V.E. Schwab graphic novels. I do think that she has more out so I do need to grab them but this is Extraordinary which ties in to the Vicious and Vengeful series and I don't know if there are any more volumes in this one. I think there are going to be. I got this hardcover edition when this first came out and then I also have the Shades of Magic like prequel comic series that deals with Rai's father I think um, and this one's called The Steel Prince and I do know that there are more editions that I haven't gotten yet um, but yeah I really like when authors have a graphic novel tied into their series. Um, and I would like to get more that I know exists that I haven't gotten yet. Speaking of, this is A Spark Within the Forge by Sabatier with Nicole Endelfinger and Sonia Liao. Um, this is an Ember in the Ashes graphic novel. I do think that there is another one that is out as well. These are prequel graphic novels. Um, and I love an Ember in the Ashes, so of course I want to have these graphic novels. But I do think I need to pick up one more for my collection. Okay, on to the next shelf, which is just more books. Here I have this cute little candle and it smells really good. I also have this caffeine mug that I think is super cute and I like to keep it on the shelf. I have two graphic novels I keep in the corner here, Mercy by Mirka Andolfo and the Dragon Prince original graphic novel, Through the Moon. I love this show and I definitely think there might be more comics that I need to pick up, but I am a Dragon Prince stan for life, so I definitely need them. Here are two Book of the Month books, House of Salt and Sorrows by Aaron A. Craig and Mexican Gothic by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. Both of these were favorites when I read them, and House of Salt and Sorrows is getting a sequel, which I'm so excited about. Um, but I'm probably going to have to pick it up in the regular edition so that it matches because I don't like it when my series mismatch. But Mexican Gothic was absolutely amazing, probably still to this day my favorite horror novel, and really got me into horror as a genre. Here we have The Last Magician and The Devil's Thief by Lisa Maxwell. This is a time-traveling series, and I really want to read it. All four of them are out. I feel like I've heard it's if you like The Diviners, this series is really good. So, you know, more of the story with this whole bookshelf. One day I will get to it, and hopefully I can pick up the other two books sometime soon. I also think that these books were, one of these books was gifted to me by my friend Melissa. So, like, love you, Melissa, if you're watching. We have the Scythe series by Neil Shusterman, Scythe, Thunderhead, and The Toll. I've read Scythe and Thunderhead. Have not read The Toll yet because, you know, I'm scared, but Scythe and the Thunderhead were, like, phenomenal books, really make you think, and I do want to eventually read the third one. I have two historical romance mass market paperbacks that I picked up at Barnes & Noble. Uh, the Duchess Steel by Tessa Dare because I love that book. It was like the first historical romance that I really read and got me into the genre. And then Chasing Cassandra by Lisa Kleypas because it looks like Cinderella. And Cinderella is like my favorite Disney princess. Also, this is the step back. These books are actually so cute and I do think it would be cool to collect more historical romance novels. This is the first four books in the Queen's Thief series. The Thief, The Queen of Atolia, The King of Atolia, and The Conspiracy of Kings. This series was originally published in like the late 90s, early 2000s, and recently got a reprint, which is when I picked these up, I think on Book Outlet. And since more books have been published in the series, I feel like it's like a very classic YA series that I do want to eventually read. And I've had these books for like a while now. We have The Hobbit and the Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. Don't ask me why I don't have the rest of The Lord of the Rings. I have read Lord of the Rings, but I read it in a big bind up that I did eventually get rid of because it was like ugh, all curled up from like me just like reading it and it was so big. I do not recommend reading The Lord of the Rings in a bind up because you would just feel like you will never be done with it. But that's why I did it. I also have The Hobbit, which is a little bit worn because this is actually my fiancé's favorite book and really like the only book he's read in the past few years, but he's read it like three times. He loves The Hobbit. Has not continued on to Lord of the Rings. Don't ask me why. I'll work on it with him. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Onyx and Ivory by Mindy Arnett. This one like was okay. It wasn't like a huge favorite of mine and I probably would have unhauled it except it's the first gift that Maddie ever got me, so I'm keeping it. So now we have my Bridget Kimmerer fantasy books, A Curse of Dark and Lonely, A Heart So Fierce and Broken, and A Vow 
So Bold and Deadly, so that's the first three in the series, and we have the spin-off series, Forging Silver and Two Stars. I've read all of these and love them. More Bridget Cameron books, Defy the Night and Defend the Dawn, which is her new fantasy series, and I love it. Okay, and here's another shelf with some fave authors of mine. First up, I have this Owl Crate mason jar that I keep on my shelf, and it says Bookworm and Proud, and I think it's so cute. A baby Dragon from How to Train Your Dragon. I must have gotten this candle in Owl Crate forever ago, like years ago, and I still haven't burned it because it literally smells so good. I love to just open it and smell it. <laughs> Negades and Arch Enemies by Marissa Meyer. I do need to pick up the third book in this series. Still haven't read this series, but I love Marissa Meyer, so I will probably like it. Gilded by Marissa Meyer. Looking forward to reading this one because it is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. Heartless by Marissa Meyer. And of course, we have the Lunar Chronicles, Cinder, Scarlet, Cress, and Winter. And these books, I feel like we're really pivotal in me getting back into YA, and the series will always hold a special place in my heart. The Merciful Crow and The Faceless Hawk by Margaret Owen. Love Margaret Owen, love the series. And then I also have this pre-order artwork that I got for her newest series, which is on a different shelf. The fifth season, The Obelisk Gate and the Stone Side by N.K. Jemisin. This is literally one of the most phenomenal series I've ever read. Seriously, everyone needs to read it. I read it while I was in college and not even reading a lot of books and I was just like absolutely addicted. I do want to pick up more of N.K. Jemisin's work because I think that she is literally a genius. Here I have Red Queen and Glass Sword by Victoria Aveyard Collector's Editions. Unfortunately, I don't think they ever did collector's editions for the other books in the series. We have Glass Sword, King's Cage, Warstorm, and Broken Throne by Victoria Aveyard. I don't have the Red Queen hardcover in the regular edition. I do need to pick that up at some point, but I had actually unhauled these books. I was like, no, I'm like over them. I don't need them in my collection anymore. And I, well, unhauled them, I gave them Maddie to read, and then she wasn't reading them, so I was like, can I actually have them back? I decide the, I mean, I just like, the series is very sentimental for me, because like I mentioned, like, I wasn't really reading a lot of books in college, and this was one of the first YA books that I picked up in college that really started me reading a lot a lot of books again so they're very sentimental to me and when I read these books for the first time like I was obsessed and also like I clearly didn't know how to take care of my books at the time because I had them on a shelf facing out into the sun and so like on glass sword particularly like you can see like how badly sun damaged that is and then I also have the cruel crown prequel novella I'll just show this shelf real quick and obviously not go into this because it, this is not a K-pop tour, but these are some K-pop albums that I have. Um, and yeah, I clearly have a collection. And with these, I'm probably going to make a new shelf just for K-pop stuff so that it's separated um, when I have my new apartment. Alright, so now we are down to the bottom shelf. Starting off, I have this set of the Divergent books by Veronica Roth, Divergent, Insurgent, Allegiant, and Four. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, a classic. The Giver by Lois Lowry, probably my favorite book I ever read in school. Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, still not sure if I'm going to hold on to this one. The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. Gone with the Wind by Margaret Mitchell. My grandma always says how much she loves this book, so I do want to read it one day. Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. I did unhaul the rest of this series because I don't think I'm ever going to read them again, but I held on to the first volume. Same thing with Game of Thrones. I have this first volume in the illustrated anniversary special edition, but I probably am not going to repurchase the rest of the series until the new book, if it ever comes out. Shadowcaster by Cindy Williams Chima. I just have this one book by her. The UK hardcovers of Nevernight, God's Grave, and Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff, and the US editions of Nevernight, God's Grave, and Dark Dawn. Daughter of Smoke and Bone, Dreams of Gods and Monsters, and Days of Blood and Starlet by Lainey Taylor. Now, I'm not going to pull these out individually because they're really hard to get back in the box, but The Final Empire, The Well of Ascension, and The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. UK paperback edition that's really pretty, and this is the start of the, the Mistborn world. <laughs> Lastly on this shelf, we have a box set of Percy Jackson and the Olympians, The Lightning Thief, The Sea of Monsters, the Titan's Curse, The Battle of the Labyrinth, and The Last Olympian. Okay, here's a graphic novel and manga shelf. Just chilling in the front is the complete bind-up of The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare and art by Hyukyung Bake. And this is the Korean manhwa novelization of the series. The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. Death Note, The Black Edition, Volume 1. 
Therapy Game, Volume 1, Orange, The Complete Collection, Volume 1, Missions of Love, Volume 1, 2, and 3, Waiting for Spring, Volume 1 and 2, Snow White with the Red Hair, Volumes 1 and 2, Tokyo Ghoul, Volumes 1 and 2, Happiness, Volume 1. I discovered that you can read all of these volumes on Kindle Unlimited, which is pretty cool. And Full Metal Alchemist in these Full Metal Editions, Volume 1. Then we have some more Shadowhunter stuff. I have Just Clockwork Prince in the individual volumes of the... Manhwa Infernal Devices. Then I have the graphic novels of the Mortal Instruments, volumes 1 and 2. I think they're up to volume 6, so I do want to go out and buy the rest of them. You know the Dawn, volume 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. This is the one manga that I'm like committed to collecting all of the volumes, so I really need to continue on with my collection. They were kind of out of stock for a while with like pandemic shortages, but hopefully they are back in stock soon and I can continue reading and collecting. There's like 30 volumes at this point though. Sweat and Soap, volume one and two. Abandoned Empress, volume one. I really wanna get the next ones because the illustrations are so pretty and full color. Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger, then Exile, Everblaze, and Never Seen, one of my favorite middle grade series ever. And we also have Lodestar and Nightfall. I need to definitely catch up and continue on with the series because it's amazing. So at this point, since I'm about to move, I just have books randomly on this bottom shelf with K-pop albums behind it. Yeah, I, I just need more space. First up, we have XOXO by Axie O, Once Upon a K-Prom by Kat Cho, and Flip the Script by Lila Lee, Music of the Night by Angela J. Ford, Crave by Tracy Wolf. Barnes & Noble exclusive edition paperback of A Court of Silver Flame. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snake by Suzanne Collins. And then I do have randomly my editions of The Hunger Games, Catching Fire, and Mockingjay on this shelf. So that is it for my main bookshelves. And now let's go over to my bookshelf that I have in the corner. That's mainly my fantasy romance and overflow shelf. <laughs> Welcome to what I call my fantasy romance shelf where it's primarily fantasy romance but also a little bit of overflow of other books especially towards the bottom and this is a shelf that I got recently and it's just from Target so it's a little bit of a different size so when I move I'll probably be doing something different with it not sure but let's go through the books on this top shelf here first I have some arcs that I pulled off that were on top of the shelf and these are just arcs that I want to keep for my collection because I love them and I adore the authors. The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. Defy the Night by Bridget Kimmerer. Light Lark by Alex Astor. This one just ended up being a big controversy, so I wanted to keep it for posterity. And Belladonna by Adeline Grace, which ended up being one of my favorite reads this year, so I'm so excited to have an arc. Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. These Violent Delights and the Our Violent Ends by Chloe Gong. Girls of Paper and Fire and Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nyon. There Will Come a Darkness and As the Shadow Rises by Katie Rose Poole. Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson. When Night Breaks by Janela Angelas. I do need to pick up the first one. I read it as an arc and I loved it. An Ember in the Ashes, A Torch Against the Night, A Reaper at the Gates, and A Sky Beyond the Storm. So happy we finally have matching covers. And then on the left is a print I think I got in an owl crate many, many moons ago. Now definitely on to a fantasy romance centered shelf. This is a cool rock I got at the Arizona airport. Guild and Glint by Raven Kennedy in the Plated Prisoner series. Honestly, I feel like these hardcover editions are my favorite of all of the covers that have come out. And the Naked Hardback is very gorgeous. Feather, Celestial, and Starlight by Olivia Wildenstein. I just posted my reading vlog where I read this series. Please watch it because I love the series so much. Between Wrath and Mercy and Between Despair and Hope by Jez Wisecup. Love her so much. A Queen's Game by Ari Lee. Sea of Room by Pam Godwin. I know it's technically historical, but pirates, it just kind of fit in with the shelf. The High Mountain Court by A.K. Mulford. The Bridge Kingdom, The Traitor Queen, and The Inadequate Heir by Daniel L. Jensen. Master of Crows by Grace Draven. I actually found this in my apartment's, like, little free library. A Kingdom of Stars and Shadows by Holly Renee. A Cursed Kiss and A Cursed Heart by Jenny Hickman. And finally, Legend and Lattes by Travis Beldier. Another fantasy romance shelf. Here we have a little Germany ornament um, with Long Island on it because family is German and from Long Island. The Paperback of Guild by Raven Kennedy. Rhapsodic, A Strange Hymn and A Dark Harmony by Laura Thalassa, The Bargainer series. Bow Before the Elf Queen and Long Live the Elf Queen by J.M. Curl. What Lies Beyond the Veil and What Hunts Inside the Shadows by Harper L. Woods. A Touch of Darkness by Scarlet St. Clair. King of Battle and Blood by Scarlet St. Clair. Court of the Vampire Queen by Katie Robert. A Promise of Fire, Breath of Fire, Heart on Fire, and A Curse of Queens by Amanda Boucher. And The Night and Its Moon by Piper C.J. 
Okay, and now here's where things start to get a little uh, overflow. Anastasia by Sophie Lark. A Dawn of Onyx by Kate Golden. A Crown of Ivy and Glass by Claire Legrand. An arc. So excited about this one. Heart of the Sun Warrior by Sue Lin Tan. The Waterstones exclusive. Okay, now we have some Zodiac Academy. My favorite addictive series. Zodiac Academy, The Awakening is Told by the Boys, Zodiac Academy, The Awakening, Ruthless Fae, The Reckoning, Shadow Princess, Cursed Fates. That's one through five. Here we have Faded Throne and Heartless Sky, literally waiting for number eight to be available in paperback. So excited. Laura Olympus by Rachel Smith, volumes one, two, and three. I am so excited this got a physical edition because I've been reading the webtoon since 2018 and I've been collecting the Barnes & Noble exclusive editions. The Fine Print and Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. Go on to some JLA. White Hot Kiss, Stone Cold Touch, and Every Last Breath, the Dark Element series. The Lux Bind Ups, Lux Beginnings, Lux Consequences, and Lux Opposition. Storm and Fury, Rage and Ruin, and Grace and Glory. Okay, and this bottom shelf here is a true, like, literal just overflow until I move and I ha have more space and I know where I can put things. Ledge by Stacey McEwen. On My Rage by Saba Tahir. I Kiss Shara Wheeler by Casey McQuinston. The Last Housewife and In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston Collector's Edition. City of Bones Collector's Edition, I think for the 15th anniversary. Sorcery of Thorns and Enchantment of Ravens in the Special Editions from France. The Bonds That Tie series by Jay Bree. Broken Bonds, Savage Bonds, Blood Bonds, Force Bonds. Twisted Love, Twisted Games, Twisted Hate, and Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. Foul Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong. Happenstance by Tessa Bailey. Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. Beach Read, People We Meet on Vacation and Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Raven Unveiled from Grace Draven. Cursed by Marissa Meyer. River of the Lost City, Stellar Loon by Shannon Messenger. Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare, Barnes & Noble Collector's Edition. And Foul Lady Fortune, Barnes & Noble Exclusive Edition. The sprayed edging. The Alice Paradox by Al Olivia Blake. Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sue Lin Tan. Waterstones exclusive with the sprayed edge. House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielski. Ordinary Heroes, a memoir of 9-11 by Joseph Pfeiffer. The Emperor of All Maladies by Siddhartha Mukherjee. The Radium Girls by Kate Moore. And finally, Fortuna Sworn, Restless Slumber, Deadly Dreams, and Beautiful Nightmares by K.J. Sutton. Okay, now we have random books that are on my nightstand. Verity by Colleen Hoover. Angelina Frankenstein Makes Her Match by Sally Thorne. The Hacienda by Isabel Cunhas. The Unbalanced Equation by H.L. McFarlane. The Keeper of Night by Kylie Lee Baker. This Woven Kingdom by Tarana Mafi. Castles in Their Bones by Laura Sebastian. Unsolved Supernatural by Ryan Bergura and Shane Day. The Makeup Test by Jenny L. Howe. A Lady's Formula for Love by Elizabeth Everett. Soulmates by Susan Lee. The Drowned Woods by Emily Lloyd-Jones. And A Taste of Golden Iron by Alexandra Rowland. Okay, now let's go over what's in my TBR cart. Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. For the Throne by Hannah Witten. Beyond the Ruby Veil vale by Mara Fitzgerald. Luminous by Mara Rutherford, Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff, Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kogwaya, All of Us Villains by Amanda Foodie and Christine Lynn Herman, A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson, Little Thieves by Margaret Owen, and The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah, Bronebreaker by Victoria Aviard, The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna, These Hollow Vows by Lexi Ryan, The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller, Juniper and Thorn by Ava Reed, House of Hunger by Alexis Henderson. We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Fazil. Vicious Spirits by Kat Cho. Blood Air by Amelie Wen Zhao. Graceling by Kristen Cashor. Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevers. The Kiss of Deception. The Heart of Betrayal. And The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson. The Lost Book of the White by Cassandra Clare and Wesley Chu. A Deal with the Elf King and Dance with the Fae Prince by Elise Kova. New Spring and The Wheel of Time. Book One, The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. A Trial of Sorcerers by Elise Kova. Legendborn by Tracy Dion. The Last Legacy by Adrian Young. Break Your Glass Slipper, Shine Your Icy Crown, and Flower Crowns and Fearsome Things by Amanda Lovelace. Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony DeWare. Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. The Wands Were Meant to Find by Joan Heath. Too Good to Be Real by Melanie Johnson. The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. Two Became the Sun by Chelly Parker Tan. A Curse in Ash by... Julie Xantopoulos, A Magic Steeped in Poison by Judy Island, Bring Me Their Hearts by Sarah Wolf, Gods and Monsters by Janie Marie, The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick, 
City of Dusk by Tara Sim, and The Royals Next Door by Karina Halley. And this is pretty much every book that I own. All right, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know down below what you think of my bookshelves. I'm so excited that I get to do another bookshelf tour and share my shelves with you guys. And if you watch my last bookshelf tour to this one now, you'll see how much my collection has grown. Love you guys all so much. I really appreciate you watching. Leave a little book stack if you have watched all the way to the end. And as always, have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.